Welcome back to the channel guys, thank you for tuning in. This trip is from Orlando, Florida to Europe, Ireland specifically. Eight hours later. We flew in on an Irish airline called Aer Lingus straight into Dublin. The flight was great, the airport was easy to navigate, we hopped into Uber and were ready to explore. We specifically chose a hotel that was close to the train station, rail car, and bus station, we'll show you why shortly. After dropping off our luggage, we made our way to the National Museum of Ireland Decorative Arts and History. The museum is housed in a former military barracks, which adds to the historical ambiance of the institution. The museum was founded in 1877 alongside the Natural History Division and the Antiques Arts Division, which we'll look at later. The military side of the museum features artifacts and memorabilia tracing Ireland's military history from 1550 to present. After we got done here, we went over to look at the arts and artifacts. You can explore various pieces of furniture, ceramics, glass, and other decorative arts providing insight into Irish design and craftsmanship. The handcrafted silver was one of our favorite parts of this portion of the museum. Now we'll be taking a look at the historic Asgard yacht. The yacht was built in 1905 by Colin Archer, a celebrated Norwegian naval architect. Archer is a reminder of the turbulent events of 1914. We left the museum and hit the road for about a mile and a half walk to our next destination. We definitely did a lot of walking on this trip, but the cool thing is you get to see how the architecture slowly changes. We have now made it to Jameson, home of the Irish whiskey. John Jameson founded the brand in 1780, and today the former factory stands as a monument to the Irish whiskey. There are no less than seven different tours to choose from. Right now, we're on the 45-minute Bow Street Experience Tour. Our guide was very knowledgeable and entertaining, and in addition, he spoke about five different languages. We were quite impressed with the display and the lighting technology on this tour. Now we're at the tail end of the tour, in which you get to try three different whiskeys that are only produced and sold in Europe. The rack of barrels over the exit I thought was a really nice touch. We are now back on the streets of Dublin, which is the capital and the largest city in Ireland. The architecture that we saw on our walk over to the Dublin Castle was absolutely beautiful. This is the Dublin Castle, a historic complex dating back to the medieval period. It served various purposes, including the residence of the British monarch's representative in Ireland. We were a little pressed for time, so we did not tour the interior of this castle, but we'll show you others later. The most popular Irish beer, of course, that's Guinness. The River Liffey divides Ireland into north side and south side. There are numerous bridges crossing the river, each have its own character. We're currently crossing over the Hapenny Bridge, which was built in May of 1816. The area that we're entering into now has the oldest pubs, bars, and restaurants in Dublin. We were here midweek, but on the weekend, this place gets packed with tourists and locals. Beautiful night lighting. We got up at 5.30 for this next journey. By the way, in Ireland, they don't say trip, they say journey. We are embarking on a three and a half hour ride to the cliffs. We're going from the far east coast to the far west coast. The countryside views were absolutely amazing. We have now made it to the cliffs of Mohir, Ireland's most breathtaking natural wonder situated on the west coast of County Clare. These cliffs actually stretch nine miles along the Atlantic coast. You see this water flying over the cliffs and the cliffs are 702 feet from sea level at its highest point. Now back to the water flying back up over the cliffs. All right, let's take a closer look. What is happening is the water from a waterfall is being blown back over the cliffs because it's 30 to 50 mile an hour winds. We took a look at the castle and then we went inside to explore the visitor center. In here, you'll find history about the land and the cliffs as well as interactive displays. This is definitely one of the top three tourist destinations of Ireland. We are now back on the road as we follow the coast on our left to our next destination. Still on the west coast, we've made it to a city in Ireland called Galway. Galway is referred to as the cultural heart of Ireland due to its lively art scene, traditional Irish music, theater, and street performances. Having just been to Canada, this city reminded me a little bit of Quebec City. To take in more history, we actually did a guided street tour here. This statue is the two wilds, okay? We have Oscar Wilde, playwright, raconteur, Storyteller, magnificent. The streets are lined with shops, restaurants, and boutiques, and specifically, they also have quite a bit of jewelry stores, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Notice how they were already getting ready for Christmas in October. 
Galway is a historic fishing village where the original Irish ring, the Clattering, originated. The ring symbolizes love, loyalty, and friendship. Here is a popular McDonough's, not to be mistaken with McDonald's, and they're very popular for their fish and chips. After a two and a half hour train ride, we're now south in a city called Cork. Definitely quite a bit of levels of change in elevation. Almost looks like you'd be running downhill from your bedroom to your living room. Cork is the second largest city in Ireland and only second to Dublin in population. Two mile walk to our next destination. This is the Cork City Gale, what we pronounce as jail or prison, and it's now a museum. This institution was opened in 1824 and it was reported as the finest in the Three Kingdoms. Many of the prisoners in the late 19th century were repeat offenders and they were locked up for what would not be considered imprisonable offenses today. I'll give you an example of what I mean. One inmate, Mary Tucker, was imprisoned three times from 1849 to 1908 for offenses such as obscene language and drunkenness. This child here that you just saw was in prison for three weeks for stealing food because he was hungry. Also too, you were not just held here. Depending on the offense, you had different levels of punishment that you had to endure while you were here. Notice the last one, confiscating your clothes, yikes. Wanted young skinny wiry fellows not over 18. Must be expert riders willing to risk death daily. What were they gonna do? They were gonna perform to Pony Express. On to the next adventure. Look at this tree growing perfectly fine in this flowing river. I'm gonna show you another angle of that later too. We are now at the Old Cork Waterworks Experience. The waterworks was constructed during a time of rebellion, maritime trade, and mass immigration. They have interactive displays that show you the water filtration process, and also at one time they even had wood pipes. Look at this fully manually operated elevator. Well, it's actually a lift. They call it lift here, not elevator. But you manually go up and down, you manually open the door. It was so cool and we had fun doing it. Here is an actual water processing area. I told you I was going to show you another angle of the tree that was in the river before. Look at all these trees growing just fine. On the left are the two buildings we just showed you and walked through, and then on the right is the massive chimney for the processing center. Heading back to the hotel, we walked through the shopping district and hub of Cork. By the way, they like Krispy Kreme in Ireland because they're all over the place. Haven't seen a Tommy Hilfiger store in a while. Overall, excellent city. We loved it. We're going to pack up and head to the next one. Now we're on about an hour and a half journey to our next destination, which is my favorite word to say, Killarney. Again, we dropped off our stuff at the hotel and hit the road. To cover Killarney National Park as much as we could in the first hour, we hopped on a horse and buggy. Our horse's name was Bessie, and she was basically all gas, no brakes, and she was eager to take us through the park. The park is pretty big, approximately 41 square miles, 106 square kilometers, and it was established in 1932. This park is also home to Ireland's tallest mountain range. Now we're at the well-known Ross Castle. This castle was built in the late 15th century by a local ruling clan, the O'Donohues. Because the castle was near the water's edge, it was hard for an enemy to approach undetected. The front entrance was a small anteroom secured by an iron grill or yet by the outer wall. We went inside the visitor center and there you could see a complete and overall model of the castle inside. After that, we hopped back on Bessie to continue our tour. The homes and real estate we're passing on our way out of the park was 1.2 to 1.5 million pounds, so at about 20% to convert that to dollars. Next stop is the waterfalls. By the way, all signs in Ireland are in English and also Gaelic. Sitting at the base of Torque Mountain is Torque Waterfall and Torque means boar in Irish. You can follow a 2.3 mile loop near Muckrose, County Kerry. The top of the waterfall is always my favorite, but we did follow it down to some of the lower parts and it was absolute natural beauty. Also too, keep in mind these waterfalls are still inside Killarney National Park. Now we're headed to the very significant Iris Muckross house. For over 200 years and seven generations of the Herbert family, they lived at the Muckross house, assuming a fortune from copper mining and becoming established among the upper echelon of the Iris society. Another fun fact is Queen Victoria actually spent two nights here. As we're touring, you can tell this is now a fully accredited museum. Have a look at the size of this pool table, it's huge. We spent about two hours touring all of the levels of the home as well as the beautiful land and gardens. 
Now we're going to take a tour called the Ring of Kerry. I'm going to show you shots from all the points on this map. About a 30 minute ride from the park, we're now at the Red Fox Inn. One thing I have not told you guys about yet is the Irish coffee. It's a caffeinated alcoholic drink consisting of Irish whiskey, hot coffee, and sugar. And they were serving it here like crazy. If you wanted to see the Irish countryside like we did, then this is definitely going to be the tour for you. This was a half day tour through multiple different towns showing you lots of different landscapes and beauty that the Ring of Kerry has to offer. This tour is officially described as a scenic drive through the Everleigh Peninsula in Southwest Ireland's County Kerry. Highlights for us were the rivers, lakes, and oceans that we saw and the different architecture of the towns that we ended up driving through. We stopped at a local pub that had seafood chowder and it had massive chunks of lobster and Amber absolutely loved it. The temperature was about 47 degrees and even though I did not catch it on film, there was someone that was surfing in the Atlantic Ocean. The landscape did still change as we went to different parts of the peninsula. This was the second to last town that we drove through and in my opinion it was definitely the most colorful. Imagine waking up every morning and this is the view that you get to see. Recap, we've been to Dublin, Cork, Killarney, The Cliffs, Galway, and Ring of Kerry. We are now traveling by rail back to Dublin because we're going to have to catch a flight out of Dublin the following morning. The only form of transportation we have not used was a rail car, so we hopped on that to get to our fourth and final hotel. This is St. Stephen's Green Park, and it was right across the street from our hotel. It kind of has the feel of Central Park in New York as a beautiful park in the middle of the city. This area is about three and a half miles away from the train station and a little bit different from where we stayed initially, but we definitely really did like this side of Dublin. We will wrap it up here, and of course, we will see you in the next one.